Well, hello and welcome to this worship for St. Saturns in Hentlan, for Llanevydd and for Bulchai on the 10th of January 2021. As the coronavirus is spreading through um, the UK, we went into the tighter measures all around the UK on Tuesday. And as a result, we had to make the difficult decision to close church just at least through January um, until hopefully people will be able to move around a bit safer um, as we come into February. So we'll review that at the end of the month. That said, this is online worship, which is made available on the social media sites and will be sent out um, by all the emails for those who don't use social media. Today is the baptism of Jesus Christ in the Anglican Church and in churches, other denominations wider. We remember in our calendars the baptism of Jesus. It's a time where Jesus himself was baptised by John the Baptist. John the Baptist who pointed to Jesus and cleared the way for Jesus to come was very shocked when actually Jesus himself came for baptism as John the Baptist was baptising others in the River Jordan. And it's the fact that God himself, born in a human being, fully God, fully human, Jesus Christ, went and immersed in the River Jordan for that ritual of baptism that as Christians we see it as a truly significant beginning of our own Christian journeys. It's good enough for Jesus, who came in human form. It's good enough for us, and it truly is fantastic. I still have my um, baptism card from when I was baptised at three three weeks old, and I do believe, actually, that, that that has really played its part in my life, and it does. Any baptism plays its part in your life because it's about you. As Jesus emerged out of those waters, as John was doing the baptism, there is said to have been the sound of God that said, he's my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. You are my beloved. Those words are invited to each of us that step into the rite of baptism. We're each God's beloved. And throughout our lives, once baptised, God nudges and works with us and in us. And we're invited into the community, the Christian community. It truly is a special occasion. And we've got two coming up in St. Adrons. We've got one on, uh, in, in April and one in May in the summer. If anyone else is thinking of getting baptised, anyone who's perchance upon uh, this video online um, who doesn't usually come to church, if you're thinking of being baptised, it really is precious I, I absolutely tell you that there's something truly, truly special about being baptised into the Christian church. Your life will certainly be changed and you're invited in that love, that love of God, um, just to be closer um, as you make your rights, as you make your vows um, and the community affirms them in that act of baptism. So we worship with our red books today. These 2004 liturgies are available online and I'll put the link for anyone who wants to follow. Again, if someone's come across our worship online who doesn't normally come to church, if you want to follow on this. So we're being filmed at the font in St. Sadorns just for this first part of the service and our worship begins on page 23. Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we bring our sins to Almighty God in a 
time of silence that follows the Kyrie's. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collects for this baptism of Christ Sunday. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant that we who are born again by water and the Spirit may rejoice to be called your children through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So our first reading is taken from Genesis in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness and he called the light day the darkness. He called night and there was evening and there was morning. The first day. I'm going to pray through a psalm, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So we come to our second reading from the book of Acts, and it's Paul in chapter 19 in Ephesus. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the, the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no, we, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And so Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive and John's baptism through John they replied and Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance he told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is in Jesus when Paul placed his hands on them the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied 
There were about 12 men in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're going to go over now um, straight into the office of David Miller, uh, the lay reader in our mission area, Tembi mission area. And he's going to... He's, he's, he's going to, first of all, read the gospel. And when he's read the gospel, um, he's going to preach for us. And it's a, it's a meditative sermon. It's a sermon that allows us to enter into the depths of what we've been talking about so far on this Baptism Sunday of Jesus Christ. And then after that, we'll go into the Philippians Creed straight from there, which will give you the opportunity to to speak the Philippians Creed as the words go by over the screen. Hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I the straps of whose sandals are not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This baptism of Jesus marks his official start of ministry. This was the time that Jesus publicly showed his choice to follow God's will. Up until then, he probably lived in Nazareth, working as a carpenter or builder like Joseph, his father. And he must have walked about 70 miles from Nazareth to the River Jordan near Jericho to be baptised, so it must have been important to him. So what happened? Well, perhaps it's a bit like this. I want you all to imagine that we're going to London on a trip. Here we are on the coach, driving down to London, and we arrive at the Albert Hall to hear the last night of the proms. The hall is packed and noisy, and the music lovers are excited. We all have our programmes and are waiting for the thunderous music to start. You know, the sort of music, land of hope and glory, Jerusalem, the sort of music that gets you moved and moving. So the concert manager comes up onto the stage and in building up, he announces that the famous conductor we're all waiting for has arrived and everyone's on their feet, full of expectation. But as we stand there eagerly, a quiet figure comes onto the stage, carrying not a conductor's baton, but a small flute. We fall quiet, shocked into silence, and he starts to play the flute gently, but a tune quite different from what we've imagined to be getting. And as we listen, we start to hear familiar themes in a new way. The music is haunting. It gets into our imagination, gets into our soul. 
It is both calming and uplifting. And it sounds familiar, even though we can't actually place it. Then, as the flute finishes, the orchestra starts a new version of the music we've been expecting all along. So John is the concert manager whipping up the excitement, the excitement of the conductor arriving and there's the one who was going to appear. He's much more powerful than me. He'll give you God's spirit, not just water. And then we see Jesus. So far, we've only seen him as a baby. A baby already with a price on his head from Herod. And Jesus stands humbly before John, asking for baptism. In the same way that the other Jews have come in order to repent before facing judgment. And John is horrified. Why is Jesus coming to him for baptism? And where is the fire and the thunder he expected? Surely John should be baptized by him, not the other way round. Jesus explains that he is coming to fulfill God's plan. This will involve the spirit coming, but to liberate and heal rather than judge and condemn. Jesus is identifying with God's people, us, us now, taking our place, sharing our penitence, living our lives and dying our deaths. In the past, Israel came through the water of the Red Sea and was given the law. Jesus comes from the water of baptism and receives God's spirit and affirmation, affirmation as God's son. God's son of the lineage of David, but also with some echoes of Abraham prepared to sacrifice his son whom he loved. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But the dove indicates the judgment will be in peace rather than war. Jesus will take the judgment upon himself and get rid of it. Get rid of it forever. And Jesus is always surprising us. He comes to fulfill God's plans. He doesn't come to fulfill ours. He does not always play the music we expect. But if we listen carefully to him, we'll find that the longings and the hunger we carry, the hiraith, will be filled. If we follow Jesus through his baptism, put aside our own plans and submit to God's plans, we will find that voice from heaven that we long for, speaking to us as well, telling us, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. So what messages should we take home from this passage? Well, firstly, Jesus accepted the baptism of repentance, which he didn't need to do, he is perfect. Jesus showed humility, but perhaps more importantly, opened a channel of communication between us and God. Secondly, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus, not to overcome sin, he had no need of that, but to equip him for the work in hand. We need the Holy Spirit for help in our earthly ministries. Finally, we all need to be told we are wanted, needed and valued. We don't ever grow out of that. We need to believe we are God's beloved child and he is pleased with us and that he will therefore protect us and he will help us and that we're not alone. We are never alone and we don't need to carry our burdens alone. 
May the words of our lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Though he was in the form of God, Christ Jesus did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a servant, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So we come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. At his baptism, your voice, O Lord, announced your beloved Son. May all who are baptised in his name proclaim him in word and in deed. Unite your church in the waters of new birth by your Holy Spirit. Arglwydd yn dydrygaredd rando enwedi. At the beginning of creation, your word, O Lord, brought everything into being. Give to your people reverence for all you have made that bears your image. May we be to one another a blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In baptizing all who came, John displayed the hospitality of your love, hospitality of your love. Increase within us the same spirit of welcome and openness to repentance, to metanoia. Unlock the chains of past mistakes and reveal the gateway to newness. Newness of life for all. Arglwydd yn dydrygaredd rando einweddi. At your command, your word, O Lord, brings light into darkness. Shine your radiant beams on all who are in need of your healing grace at this time. Bring us all to rejoice in your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your word, O Lord, is our beginning and our end. Into your loving purpose, we commend all who have died. May we at the last pass through the waters of death to live with you forever. Arcuid and Dadrigareth, Rando Enguadim. Conclude our prayers by saying together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not possible to say the peace. But as we've heard in our Acts reading that the Holy Spirit, as Paul put his hands on, um, and then we heard of the Holy Spirit in our Gospel reading when the, the dove uh, descends on Jesus. Well, that Holy Spirit knows no boundaries and we offer each other peace, each in our places, where we worship this connected now. 
So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So we come to our altar. We continue with our worship on page 35 as you scroll down on your screens. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We continue on page 49 with Eucharistic Prayer 3. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Caused by the leading of a star, you have revealed him to the world in human form, as in following him, we are brought out of darkness into his marvellous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise. And grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and blood. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and he gave you thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. A rin mod. A rol supa camera of a cupana roi di ochiti. 
Ei dradodd i ddim sgan dweud o fwch o hwn bawb, a herwydd hwn yn waed i, gwaed y cyfamod newid, a dwell heir ddrosoch a thros llawer, a meddai ond bychydau, gynnau'r chyn bob tro'r o fychydd er cof am danaf. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gift to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and cup. Strengthen our faith make us one and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your son through the earth good ag ev ach and the earth a rin dot a speak land a dot see that hosna theof or hosh and rudev argogonians and ois oisoi amen following on the screen we'll scroll down to 77 as we pray the prayer taught to us in the language of our choice ain't hard a renoite in a nevoid sanctadia de enu della de darnas canella de outlis make east in a nev that he had a die of heaven Dro in i heddiw ein bara benyddiol, a ma ddau i ni endledion, fel y ma ddau hwn yn ei endledwyr, ac na carwain ni i brofedegaeth, eith y gwared ni yw'r agdrwyr, y canes ei ddoti, y dyrnas a gallu, a gygoniant, yn oes oes oed. Amen. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world. Give us your peace. So we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us and feed down him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. those unable to receive, as I said, the boundaries there are none. But these words I'll read now are a prayer, a prayer for you to um, say in the absence of being able to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at this Eucharist. Just now you'll receive it in metaphor through these words. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. You are in the holy sacraments and I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
post-communion prayer. Refreshed by these holy gifts, Lord God, we seek your mercy, that by listening faithfully to your only Son and being obedient to the prompting of the Spirit, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer at the bottom of 83, God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Christ, the Son of Gladden, gladden your hearts, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. A bendith tu o llethiog, a tad, a mab, a rysryglan, a fawn a chlyd ac a drigo gyda chwi yn wastad. Amen. Our service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.